Hey everybody, welcome back to another video on processing. In this video, we're gonna work on doing this. So this is getting a rectangle to bounce back and forth across the screen from left to right. Uh, it is when it touches the edge, we are going to get it to change color and then bounce back in the other direction. So we'll probably do this in two parts. Uh, first thing, we'll just focus on creating the rectangle and having it bounce. And then we'll add in, that'll take the majority of the video and then we'll probably do a little bit on getting the color to change, which is kind of very similar stuff in here. Uh, I think the key to doing any of this is like there's no magic involved here. There's no magic mounts, bounce method that I'm going to call or some magic tool I need to use here. We used to think very kind of clearly and thoughtfully about kind of what values do we have to work with and how can they make how can we make them do what we want. And that's just kind of the essence of coding and I think it's expressed in this project. So let's take a look at how we're going to do this. So I'm going to start with this section of code. Um, I'm going to have, right now I'm just having draw, I have some X and Y. This is kind of building off what we did in lesson three. Uh, we have these x and y variables, and then we have, we're doing our size. Okay, so I'll just, sorry, I'll go through this a little more detail. We are just generating a an image or a, a canvas of size 1600 by 1000. We have an x and y variable that we're using to keep track of our location of our rectangle. Same thing we're doing in uh, level three. Uh, let's see, in this one, I have a background getting drawn every time draw happens. So as my rectangle moves, remember that's important to create the illusion of animation because we're going to first kind of clear the background and then draw a new thing, clear, draw, clear, draw. And that's what creates the illusion of movement in this. Okay, so now what do we need to do? Okay, I'm going to add, I'm going to, we don't have to go to the, we're having to go left and right. So I need to be in every loop. I need to be increasing X by a certain amount. What I'm going to do here, and I think this is something that happened at the end of our level three video, uh, but making a variable for this. So actually a variable is pretty critical for this. I think it's almost impossible to do otherwise. So I'm going to make a speed variable. It's going to be a global variable, so I can. it's going to be kind of persist uh, across different methods. It's not going to get erased. I'm going to set it to five to begin with. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, and I'll do this in stages here. I'm just going to increase, every time we go through the loop, I'm going to increase x by five, and we'll see what that does. Hopefully at this point, this is something we've done before. I'll try to make sure it's visible. It's something we've done before. Um, constantly just looping, giving the illusion of motion. Again, it's not really actually moving, it's just that's the illusion that we're creating. Now the problem we have here is like that rectangle is still going. It's way off the screen somewhere, but it's still going. Uh, what we need to make it do is like when it gets all the way to the edge, we want to have it just kind of turn around. Okay, so here's how we're going to make that happen. We are going to say, I need to check the X value, right? Because I'm just, Again, no magic here. I just I have access to my x variable, um, and I just need to check to see what is the status of that x variable, and then I'll show what we'll do after that. So, let's say for now I'm going to do I'll do this in a couple different ways. Let's say if x to, gets to be greater than 1600. Why 1600? Well, it's the size of my screen. So I'm going to try to increase this a little bit. Hopefully, you could see earlier. Um, 16 is 1600 is the size of my screen. So I need to check to see if it gets to that edge. If it gets to that edge, what I'm going to do is I am going to flip the speed. So I'm going to say is my speed is going to be, well, right now it's positive five to go, well, I keep getting my directions wrong. It's positive five to go this way. So if I want to go the other direction, it needs to be just negative five. And so, and also when we go, when we eventually hit this wall, negative five, when we want to flip it again, we want to switch it to positive five. So really easy code that we can write here. It's just the new version of speed is going to be equal to the old version of speed, but minus. So let's see what happens there. And we're going to do kind of this in stages to get this kind of cleaned up. So we get this working. Well, that didn't work. Uh, let's see here. Oh, because of course I'm dumb and I didn't do this with speed. I just said it is five. Maybe you caught that. Maybe let's pretend like I did that on purpose for you to catch my error. Let's try that again. So on the screen, go, 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 great. All right, so it's a couple problems here, like good so far, there's gonna be two problems. One, it bounced on the right side. It's not gonna bounce on the left because I haven't really coded for that. I just coded for if the X value gets to be too large, flip the speed. A couple things I need to do in here too though, I wanna make sure, what I didn't like about this is it waited until the rectangle was all the way across the screen to bounce back. And maybe you can think about why that is. You know, why, why is this, and this is when we're going to flip it, why is this waiting until the thing's all the way off the screen? Give me a second to think about it. If you're not sure, here's what's happening. Maybe I can pause this in the middle, no. Uh, the X and Y is actually the top left corner of our rectangle. So that's the value that when we checked for X, we were checking for the top left corner of that rectangle. If you want to check for like 
the top right corner, just the right side of that rectangle, we need to say x plus the size, the width of my rectangle, which in this case is 150. So let's try this. Again, I wish this would show up in the right spot every time, so I don't forget. There we go. We can start to get it to bounce like that. Um, so we, we're almost there. We have the thing bouncing off the right side. Uh, let's see, next step up, we want to make it bounce off the left side. So we'll do that. Inside of here, I can kind of, I don't want to like write a whole new set of code for this. I like this. I just need to have it also trigger when it hits the left side. So what I'm going to do in here is I'm going to add in an or statement. If you don't remember how to write an or, you just do these two, what are called pipes. It's going to be the shift right above your enter key on your keyboard. And we need to check to see if X is less than zero, because right, that's all the way to the, well, you can just flip, it's all the way to the left side of the screen. So let's run this and we'll see. We're going to increase the speed so we don't have to wait for so long. I'll do that for next time. I'll make it 10. It's going to go all the way across. Fingers crossed it's going to work. Yep, there we go. So it's great. We have a bouncing rectangle. Again, no magic, just trying to um, work, with the, work with the tools that we have and make them do what we want. Okay, let's see. I'm going to increase speed to 10, which is nice. I have this just single variable. I can update it here. We can do it 15 to make it even faster. Okay, so now we need to, now we're going to, I want the, I want the color to change randomly. And I'm going to introduce two new tools for this. Um, the first new tool that I'm going to, actually, I'm just going to introduce one new tool. I don't need to introduce two new tools, just one. And actually, but it's a really important one. What I want to do is I want to change the fill. I want to change like how I'm, the color that I'm using to fill my objects on the screen. In order to do that, I just need to pass some values in here. But if I do something like 20, 100, 50, like that's not going to change every time. It's just going to change once. I want it to change every single time. What I want this to do is generate, I really would love for this to be a value, a random value between 0 and 255. Same thing for this number, same thing for this number. What I can do in here is I can type random 255. So this is a tool that processing gives us called random. And whatever value I put in, I put in here is going to determine like the range of values that I can get that this thing will produce. I might show this, let me show this working and then I'll go back into, I'll show like why this is good and then I'll give you, an, I'll show an example of this thing working too. No, oh, things moving much faster. But you can see, now it's working. Every time it hits the side, it's gonna change colors. There's a lot of different things we could mess around with here too. We could mess around with like, um, changing like the Y values, we could, I mean, I'm just changing the color and changing the X speed. Like there's a lot of other things you could do. Maybe like every time it hits the wall, it's going to change the width. You know, we could do something like that. Now width would suddenly need to be a variable in here and probably have to be careful about doing that. Um, maybe it's going to get thinner every time. And this is where like maybe we can start thinking about a game where every time it hits something, every time it hits the wall, it's going to do something. All right, I'm going to try and stop the video there. I did say I was going to generate some random numbers. Let's let me try that real fast. All right, so what I'm going to do here is just inside of my draw method, I deleted all the other code that I had in there. I'll uh, I'll undo to get, oh, I can't undo it. I just messed that up. Um, maybe I can undo that? Nope, can't undo it. All right, anyways, I'll uh, have to go back to the video to see that part. If you want to look at the code. Uh, if I want to generate some random values, I just want to show you kind of what, it, what it's going to be the output of this. If I hit play, again, this is happening 30 times a second. I don't care about the screen in this case. I just want to look at the terminal. I'm having it print out the value of like random 255. So if we stop, we can see it's just generating, just like it says, we're generating a value between zero and 255. Sometimes it's one, sometimes single digits, yeah, all the way up to there. It's a decimal value. I think this thing is going to, um, our color is kind of converting that into just an integer value, but that's it. Okay, so we have some random colors, we have some bouncing. I think those are two crucial ingredients you might need for your project.